Hello, it's the next part of Open Dog, the open source quadrupedal robot. And we're actually moving back to Open Dog now to do some more work on it after I take a bit of a fork from the project to work on some other development dogs to see what I could learn by structuring the legs in a different way. Now, this project's been going on for a while. It is an ongoing development project. And initially, I thought four legs would be easy to make it work. And that's because basically, I made a couple of two-legged bipedal walking robots, both my Star Wars gonk droid, which worked pretty well. That was entirely 3D printed. And then I moved on to build Robot X, which had some metal in it and lots of 3D printing and various actuators that I bought. Both of those walked pretty much okay on two legs. The only thing I didn't take into account, of course, was those robots had quite big feet and open dog doesn't it has paws that it has to balance on so if it takes more than one leg off the ground at a time then it actually has to balance on the other two legs in terms of open dog development this robot has three motors in each leg so that's 12 motors in total and there's a kinematic model that changes that complicated geometry into cartesian coordinates so essentially i can position each foot in x y and z positions and that means the robot can move in unison so that it doesn't tear itself apart because it's quite powerful we can demonstrate that with the six axis of motion which are three rotation and three translation axis i also have some interpolation which means i can move those joints or those feet at least in straight lines through space from point A to point B by interpolating through all the positions on the way. And that means that even though the motors and the geometry might run at different speeds for different axis, we can still get that foot to an end point of all the motors stopping at one point. Now I have built in some sense of stability to this dog using an inertial measurement unit that can measure the tip in either direction. And I can try and use that to balance as it takes two legs off the ground. Now you'll notice with a real dog, that's not how they walk. They only generally at slow walking pace take one foot off the ground and keep a triangle. Now I did try and do this early on with Open Dog, but it needs to shift a significant amount of mass over to one side in order to take that foot off the ground without falling down, and that's pretty clunky. If you look at Boston Dynamics or the MIT Cheetah Dogs, you'll notice they take diagonal legs off the ground to keep balanced, and that's called a trot gate, and that's probably what I'm going to attempt with this dog. Now I did get quite away with trying to keep it balanced, it can do it for quite a long time, walking on the spot, taking diagonal legs off the ground, but if it goes slightly wrong, then basically it means it pushes down with a really rigid leg, because these legs are driven by ball screws, there's no natural spring in them, and that causes everything to go wrong. So I then thought I should investigate what if the legs were slightly springy, would that be more forgiving and it less likely to go completely wrong if Basically, it doesn't stay perfectly balanced, which is quite a hard thing to do. So I built some test legs and some test dogs, which had the legs structured in a different way. I didn't want to rebuild this one with springs in it, and springs anyway are quite unpredictable unless they're dampened and controlled mechanically. So I decided to build simulated springs with backdrivable gearboxes and some holding torque, and also a controller that would allow that foot to catch up to a position that you push it to, so we can make that spring slightly softer in code in real time as the dog tips. And the way it worked was basically if it started to tip to one side, we softened up the other legs to bring it back, and if it tipped the other way, we softened up those legs, and in the end we managed to keep it working essentially perpetually until it ran out of power, walking on the spot. And you can see the legs are quite spongy, and that's quite forgiving, and that works out quite well. Open Dog, though, is not spongy and forgiving. It's incredibly rigid. It's driven by ball screws, and that means that basically it's going to put its foot where you tell it to, and that means we have to control it incredibly well. We can assume the ground is flat, but that means the balance has to be absolutely perfect, so nothing weird happens if a foot goes down and the dog's tipped slightly more than I thought it did, or the code can't control it properly. So what I'd like to do is make these dogs' legs more spongy and forgiving, like the test dogs, but actually we've got a really rigid dog. So that means we're going to have to try and simulate a spring with a rigid actuator. So what we're going to need is some sort of foot pressure sensor that we can sense pressure and we can make the leg react accordingly. So I have got these feet on. You'll see I've got a piece that closes that I was planning to put a pressure sensor in in the future. However, I don't think this is going to be very repeatable. It's just one 3D print. And also, it's really hard to determine whether that foot's definitely on the ground or not, depending on whether there's other load on the other feet. So we're going to need another solution. So we're going to have to make some heavy-duty analog sensors. I think I'm going to have a switch as well, so it knows the foot's definitely on the ground. But when it is on the ground, we need to get some sort of load measurement. So in the past, I've used sort of springs and Hall effect sensors and magnets. And a Hall effect sensor will sense the distance from a magnet. And we can just read that with an analog in on an Arduino or whatever, but I think we're going to need something pretty heavy duty, because whatever the springs are in that case, would have to take the load of the dog on two feet at the
the minimum. That's quite a strong spring to still get quite a linear measurement with. Full sensitive resistors of course aren't linear and we found that in the past so we're gonna have to try something else. And so we're gonna have a go with a load cell and this is basically one of the load cells I got off Amazon here. It's basically a block of metal with some strain gauges on each side. It's got a little amplifier board and we can plug that into an Arduino. There is a Spark Fun Electronics hookup guide for this which details various um, strain gauges and load cells which you can of course buy from them as well. This is similar to the one I have here and what you're supposed to do as we can see in this picture is attach one side of it to um, a plate and another side of it to another plate and then basically skew it and it measures the load on the piece where the holes are so there's various others you can hang on a hook and so on and of course there's a hookup guide with the amplifier board for an Arduino and there's also some sample code here down the bottom. The code is pretty simple, we've just defined two pins there for it to be linked to, one for data and one for clock, and we've initialised the library and everything, and we've got a zero here which happens on startup, so that it's zeroed, and we could run that at any point I guess, and then we're just going to go and write those values to the serial terminal, so we should find it starts outputting zero pounds. Now there is a calibration sketch, I haven't run it, so I'm not sure that my scale is accurate, but if I start skewing this, we should be able to see that we get um, some results there. So as I skew that backwards and forwards, we should find that we get positive and negative swing. I'm not sure if I'm applying that much force to it. I don't think I am. Also twisting it slightly tends to work as well. If I twist that, we should be to see that we've got some sort of answers there. So that seems pretty good. I'm not sure if I can put the whole load of the dog on this piece of uh, metal here. This is one is rated at 20 kilograms. Um, I'm pretty sure I can't, so we're going to need to come up with some sort of shunt solution. So I've bolted that onto a piece of uh, 2040 extrusion, in fact, which is the same as the lower part of Open Dog's leg. And I've got some spacers in there because we've got the strain gauges bonded on, so it's a little gap. There's just lots of washers stacked up. It's not a particularly good job. And there's two M4s and two M5s. The load cell is actually tapped for those. Really, I could do with nuts on the top as well to hold that nice and tight so they don't come undone, but I didn't have any bolts long enough. But it'll do for now. In my code, I've changed the calibration factor to 50 from minus 7,050, which is... Uh, or 70,050, which is where it was before. And apart from that, I've done nothing. And this scaling factor gives it a much more sensitivity, so we get much higher values. So now if I bend this whole piece of aluminium, we should be to see we get um, a really big value then. If I bend it the other way, of course, it goes negative. And of course, this bit of aluminium is really rigid, so hopefully it will never creep. I've not noticed these bending in open dog, so they support the weight of the dog okay, but it doesn't put all the load onto the load cell or the strain gauge there, so we can see we get that value. But it's unlikely this is gonna get deformed, hopefully, as long as this is rigid, which it pretty much is, and we already know that takes the load of the dog. So, of course, we could just get those and put them on each leg. That's exactly the same as the lower leg of open dog, so we could put that down there. That would fit nicely in between the pivot points and the foot that we've got on there, and then we can measure the pressure on each foot, and we can make the legs react accordingly. What I really want to do, though, is be very sure that the foot is on the ground or not on the ground, so I'm going to make a new foot that's actually got a physical switch in with a spring that doesn't have to be very strong that springs that switch open, so when it is on the ground, we know it definitely is, and we can start measuring that force, and when it's off the ground, we just ignore the data, and we can also use that to calibrate the zero point because we know there's no load on it. So I've taken the old foot design and designed a completely new foot, and this is different because instead of one piece with a flexible section, we've got two pieces with an actual pivot in there. So there's a joint and that will allow the foot to open and close. Of course, with the weight of the dog on it, it will close right up to its end stop and that will switch the switch. And without the dog, we can put a spring in to push it apart. Now I've left the same space for the flexible Ninja Flex filament to be fitted in there. And hopefully that should actually act partially as the spring and to also stop that foot falling completely open. So let's get those printed and see how well it works. So here are the new and old feet. This is, of course, the new one. This is the original one. The original one was printed in Ninja Tech Armadillo, which is an incredibly tough, rigid TPU material. So that's got really good layer bonding, and there's absolutely no sign of splitting or anything on that, even with the load of the whole dog on. The dog weighs about 50 kilograms. So this one is just prototyped in PLA. I'll probably go on to print it in Armadillo again, but for now, this will do for testing. So of course, we've got that pivot in there, 
And as I mentioned, the whole thing will just fall open. So I'm gonna get the Ninja Flex flexible strip out of here, screw that back in here, and see how that performs. I've installed that piece of Ninja Flex around there, and that's screwed on the front and the back, so that now helps act a bit like a spring. And it stops it falling back a bit, but not quite enough really, so I need to constrain that a little bit more when the dog picks his feet up. I put some screw holes in here, so we might just put um, a piece of elastic or something around the leg for now. This is only the prototype. In the proper one, I might do something else, like a hard end stop on the front where this gap is. So I've installed the switch as well as you can see there, and that's the hard stop. So the force isn't on the switch itself, it's on the back of this because it can't shut anymore. So that'll tell me when the foot is definitely on the ground. And that works, of course, from any angle that the foot comes down. So that seems to be pretty good. And of course, the dog's leg fits in here with the load cell on the leg there. So then once that switch is pressed, we can start measuring that analog sensor. So I've now got my leg built with the actual piece of extrusion from OpenDog with the load cell fitted with nuts on the top and I've got the switch fitted which is now going to a Teensy 3.2 uh, which is going to run all the data from this. I've had to change the amp board here, the original board would only give me data around 11 times a second so I've upgraded that to a SparkFun NAU7802 which will go up to 320 times a second and it's an I2C device which is a standard interface. The code for that is pretty simple, we just use the library and to read the raw data we just do my scale get reading. Now I've done some thresholding here and I've also taken into account the switch that we've got installed so we don't get any value until the switch is pressed. We could also use that switch of course so we know when the foot is on the ground and perhaps do a zero calibration of the whole thing. In the serial monitor we can see the switch value and we can see the reading so if I bend this leg without the switch pressed we get nothing until the switch is pressed and then we get some sort of value. At the moment I've throttled it to 200 samples a second, but that seems pretty responsive. Let's have a look at a serial plotter. So we can see that's a bit spiky, it might need filtering, but overall we get a good range of values. So it looks pretty hacky, but I've just attached everything to the leg here so we can do some testing. Of course, this whole project is R&D, really. So that's my load cell there. We've got that switch in the foot. We've got the amp board, and we've still got a Teensy 3 here on a piece of breadboard. And the reason for that is that we can't readdress the I2C address of these amp boards, unfortunately. So we're going to need a kind of shim microcontroller that deals with this. It could also deal with zero calibration on startup each time, etc. And then that's going to send the data over to the main microcontroller for the dog. And that part is really hacky as well. It's on this grey cable that's just temporarily looped all the way up here. This is a shielded cable. Ideally, I need some sort of data interface that would actually send data from one Arduino or one TNT to the other, but I'm out of serial ports. What I really need is CAN bus, which I need to investigate and I've never used before. So for now, I'm sending the data, well, as PWM. So I'm actually writing out a PWM signal on the Teensy down here and reading it back in with interrupts on the Teensy 3.6 in the dog. So what we're now looking at is a graph of the actual load cell there, of course, working quite nicely. And that data is coming off the Teensy 3.6 in the main dog body having been sent from the Teensy on the leg all the way over with PWM. And I'm reading that signal, as I say, with interrupts, so we've got quite an accurate, um, responsive answer there, which is quite good. And obviously, when I let go of the switch, it drops back to zero. So that seems to be working pretty well. But now let's see if we can make the leg respond. So unfortunately, as you can see, now I've powered the motors up, uh, what we've actually got, I don't know if you can even see the data there, is a really bad uh, spiky signal, which is basically down to these motors being high power three phase motors, even just with holding power on. In fact, if I move the motor, we can see extra spikes on the signal. Great, uh, and that's basically inducing some voltage, of course, into the uh, signal wire there. Despite it being shielded, obviously that's not enough to help me. So we really are gonna have to investigate some sort of other data interface here, because this really, really is useless data now. Um, obviously due to the motors being powered up and the cross talk in the cables. Obviously if I power off the brushless motors, then everything's good and it's back to normal again with the proper signal. So we can see how high those spikes are actually relative to the spikes that we've got now. We'll let the uh, serial plotter rescale itself. Yeah, so that's back to normal now. So they really are big spikes there, even bigger than the signal that I should normally be sending. So, sorry this video is not more exciting. I was hoping to actually have that leg at least responding, so next time we could do it to all four legs and hopefully make the dog more dynamic. We can have to investigate CAN bus, which is a differential signal, and that's used in automotive applications, so it should automatically cancel that noise out on the line and give us much better data, and that's a much better way to do things anyway. That is something I've not looked at before, so I'm gonna to have to investigate that in the next video, and we'll come back and hopefully work that in. 
Now, lots of things in this project. It is an ongoing R&D project. We're on about part 20 here. A lot of those things have been used in other projects. So I've learned quite a lot going along doing the project as I've done it. So the brushless motors and O-drives and all of that have been used in performance robots. The first order filter that smooths out and makes all the motions smooth has been used in multiple other projects, as well as obviously CNCing aluminium and the mechanical construction and everything else. So load cells, they'll definitely be used in other projects. That looks like quite a way, good way to do things, to do force driven joints and to make things dynamic. And of course, CAN bus will be as well. So that's a really good thing to investigate at this point. Not only will it benefit this project, but will benefit other projects in my channel. So don't forget to subscribe for more updates on this and lots of other ongoing projects. If you want to support the channel, then please look at my Patreon. It's patreon.com slash xrobots. And also have YouTube channel membership if you don't like Patreon. And of course, I do have a merchandise store. I do have new performance robots t-shirts, which have just come out, as well as the good old favorite open dog, and also have mugs, bags, stickers, and various other products. All right, that's all for now.